I've talked a lot about winning battles from the offensive side of things, but I haven't said too much about defense. I get a lot of questions about it, so today's episode is going to be all about strategies for defending and holding gyms so you can get the most out of your gym defender bonus. When it comes to gym retention, the most important thing to consider is location. If you try to take over a gym in a popular, crowded area with a lot of foot traffic, you're not going to hold on to it for more than a few minutes. Because there are so many people passing through, that gym is going to get attacked and taken down almost immediately. Today I'm in an industrial area of downtown LA where there are quite a few gyms and Pokestops, but not a whole lot of foot traffic. I'm going to place defenders in as many gyms as I can and see how many I can hold on to until the end of the day. That's not far from now because it's already 6.30, but... The most efficient way to take and hold gyms is in a group, but if you're by yourself like I am today, you'll want to focus on gyms that are already controlled by your team. Unless there are very few gyms in your area, it's usually not worth the time and resources to try to take down an enemy gym. When you're by yourself, you're only going to be able to add one Pokemon to that gym, so no matter how high you train it up, someone could come around and easily take it back from you. If you start with a friendly gym, there will already be at least one or two Pokemon there as a buffer for your own, plus it'll have a decent amount of prestige so you don't have to start at zero when training it up. Before I go any further, I want to explain prestige. Think of it like a gym's experience. As it gains more prestige, it levels up. The prestige is displayed right under the gym's picture. Right now this gym is at 4,000 out of 8,000. Once I get it to 8,000 prestige, it'll level up to the next level, in this case level 4. You earn prestige by training at a gym, and the amount of prestige you earn is based on the difference between your Pokemon's CP and the CP of the Pokemon that you beat in the gym. If their CP is equal, you'll gain 500 prestige per win. If your Pokemon's CP is half or less than the CP of the Pokemon in the gym, you'll gain max prestige, which is 1,000 per win. And because gym battles favor the attacker so much, you should never have to use a Pokemon with higher CP than the defender when you're training a gym. The first thing I'm going to do is see if I have a Pokemon with 200 or less CP that can reliably defeat this Tentacruel. My Magnemite has less than half the CP of the Tentacruel, and it also has an Electric type move, which is one of Tentacruel's weaknesses. So I'm going to try it out and see how quickly I can defeat the Tentacruel. Seems like I can. Since I don't have anything that's going to efficiently beat the Tentacruel, I'm going to focus on the Vaporeon. I'll use my Electabuzz with two Electric type moves because it'll quickly take out the Tentacruel and it has about half the CP of the Vaporeon, so I'll gain max prestige from that battle. The most important thing when you're trying to train against a Pokemon that's stronger than your own is getting your dodges perfectly timed. I have a video about that, so you can check it out right here. Obviously, I couldn't do that, so I'm having a little more trouble with this gym than I expected. When it comes down to it, the most important thing is that you're using a Pokemon that you can efficiently train the gym with. Even if that means you're not getting max prestige per battle, it's better to get a little prestige every time than to get max prestige a handful of times and waste a ton of resources in the process. Ideally, you want to train a gym up a little higher than level 4, 
Level 7 is generally a good stopping point because after level 7, the amount of prestige it takes to level up increases dramatically. From level 6 to level 7, it's 4,000 prestige, and from level 7 to level 8, it's 10,000 prestige. Especially in a case like this where I'm by myself and I'm having a hard time with this tentacruel because I don't have something that efficiently trains for max prestige against it, I'm going to choose to leave it here at level 4 and move on because I'm losing light. When you're choosing which Pokemon to leave in a gym, you can consult some of the spreadsheets that I've mentioned before to see which moves are the best defensively, but the authors of both spreadsheets, Professor Kukui and QMike, have both admitted that there might be flaws in their calculations when it comes to defensive moveset ranking. One of the most common questions I get when it comes to defending gyms is why is the best defensive moveset different from the best offensive moveset? The reason is that AI-controlled Pokemon behave a little differently than human-controlled Pokemon. Pokemon defending a gym have a two second cooldown between each of their attacks, effectively adding two seconds to the cast time of every attack and changing its total damage per second. Generally, moves that take longer to cast have their DPS affected less by this change. For example, Water Gun takes half a second to cast, while Bubble takes 2.3 seconds. Overall, Water Gun's DPS is reduced far more than Bubble's because Water Gun now takes five times as long to use whereas Bubble only takes a little less than twice as long. As a general rule, quick attacks with higher base power typically deal more damage per second as defensive moves. The same can be said for charge attacks, with moves like Hydro Pump still dealing more damage per second than Water Pulse. The reason you see Water Pulse ranked higher than Hydro Pump in most defensive move sets is because there's one more factor to consider, and that's the amount of times the Pokemon uses the attack. Taking into consideration the 2 second cooldown for defenders, Hydro Pump deals about 15 damage per second while Water Pulse only deals a little over 6. While Hydro Pump might be more efficient if they were both being used consistently, in a gym defender battle, that doesn't happen. Because of the difference in their energy costs, a Pokemon can use Water Pulse 5 times for every 1 Hydro Pump. For 100 energy over the course of a battle, that equates to 100 damage dealt with Water Pulse versus 90 dealt with Hydro Pump. And because both of those moves will deal more damage per second than the Pokemon's primary attack, you want to be using them as much as possible. So when it comes to using charge moves defensively, typically, but not always, moves with lower energy costs, meaning more stamina bars, are more efficient to use. Once you know which of your Pokemon are going to perform the best defensively, those are the ones you're going to want to leave in gyms. I'll leave my Vaporeon with Water Pulse here to defend this gym. And since it has the highest CP, it's going to be the last Pokemon here. Typically, you're going to want to leave higher CP Pokemon in gyms, because if they're lower, like this Tentacruel, they'll be the first one knocked out when an enemy comes to attack the gym. Okay, I have to admit, I lied to you guys a little bit. I'm not actually alone today. Cassie's here, but because her phone screen is broken, she can't help me train up a gym. But we're going to see if she can get lucky enough to leave a Pokemon there. <laughs> Leaving a Pokemon in a gym is worth 2,000 prestige. Right now this gym is about 1,500 prestige short of leveling up, so once Cassie leaves her Pokemon, you'll see its level increase. Seeking? Yeah. Alright. Got it. Now that I've trained this gym up and left the Pokemon here, I'm going to look for a few more Team Instinct gyms in the area and see if I can add some Pokemon to those. Since Team Instinct is so heavily outnumbered, there are very few gyms in this area that we already control. So I found a pretty weak Team Mystic gym, and I'm just going to take this one down and take over it really quickly. not too difficult to beat, but it is going to take a little bit longer. Alright, there we go. Down to zero. I'm going to claim this for instinct. 
Hopefully I can do that before someone else does it. Got it. So that's two gyms. I'm gonna have Cassie leave a Pokemon now, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here training this up because it's getting dark already. Here's gym number three. Pretty close to Skid Row, so I don't think a whole lot of Pokemon players are coming down this way. There's only one Pokemon in the gym. It's a Dragonite, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to train efficiently against this. So I'm gonna leave my Pokemon here first. Now I can train against that pretty easily with some of my lower CP water types. If you find a good Pokemon with decent moves at lower CP, it's a good idea to keep that because you can always use them to train. You never know what the CP of a Pokemon in a gym is gonna be. So it's good to always have something in every range so that you can train efficiently on whatever might come up. very poorly. Someone's battling this gym as I'm trying to train it up. And unfortunately, the way things are set up right now, he has the advantage. He's gonna lower the prestige of the gym a lot faster than I can raise it. And that's just an unfortunate side effect of the way things are. The reason I haven't done an episode on gym defense until now is because, honestly, I think it's pretty pointless. It's really difficult to take and hold a gym for more than a few hours. Even the gyms that we took and trained up to level 7 on Anakappa Island yesterday were gone. Someone took them down less than 24 hours after we left the island. So really it's just, it's difficult to hold on to a gym no matter what you do. Look, this is down to 1500 prestige. So since someone is obviously battling this gym, probably from inside the building or somewhere around here, there's really no point in me trying to train it up and leave something because the second I'm gone, this gym is gone too. Well, this next gym is in a paid parking lot. It's this giant chair, which is actually really cool. But since I don't want to pay for parking just to put a Pokemon in the gym, I'm going to stop here and get kicked out by security or uh, maybe that's not security. <laughs> but I'm going to leave a Pokemon real quick and then we're going to move on. That's three gyms now. Let's see how many of them I'm still holding. Three. I could collect my biggest bonus ever right now but I'm gonna try to look for one or two more. See if I can get a little bit more than three. My search for Team Instinct gyms brought me to some pretty sketchy parts of LA and my phone just died. I managed to claim three gyms in total, not even claim, add Pokemon to three gyms. But now that my phone's dead, I'm gonna head home, charge it up a little bit, see if I'm still controlling any of those gyms by the time I do that and then head out and find some gyms around home that I can try to add some Pokemon to. While I'm here getting a charge into the phone, let's talk a little more about gyms. Right now, gyms are designed to have a high turnover rate. They're meant to change hands quickly. Gym battles massively favor the attacker so that it's easier to take them down. One attacker can lower a gym's prestige much faster than one person training can raise the prestige. An attacker lowers a gym's prestige by 500 for each Pokemon they defeat, and they have the benefit of using their six strongest Pokemon to do that. When you're training a gym, you get to use one Pokemon, and it has to be of equal strength to the Pokemon you're training against if you want to gain 500 prestige. In the most recent update notes, Niantic mentioned that they're working on rebalancing training battles. In a previous episode, I said that I expect them to fix something that's kind of being exploited which allows people to train gyms up quickly using weak Pokemon. Without going into too much detail, essentially you put something weak in a gym, like a Magikarp with 100 CP, and use all your throwaway Pokemon with 50 CP to easily beat the Magikarp and train it up really quickly. There's one specific method known as the Bubble Strat, which lets you use a 10 CP Diglett against a 20 CP Pokemon with Bubble as its fast move, and because Bubble takes so long to use, you can knock that Pokemon out with the Diglett before the Pokemon even attacks and gain prestige really quickly without using any potions. I expect Niantic's training balances to fix exploits like this by changing the way that prestige is earned. Instead of calculating prestige at a flat rate, I expect it to scale with the defending Pokemon's CP. Currently you can gain max prestige by defeating a defender using a Pokemon with half of its CP. 
and it doesn't matter what the actual CP value is. It could be a Dragonite with 3000 CP, and you use a Pokemon with 1500, or it could be a Pokemon with 20 CP, and you use a Diglett with 10. You're still going to gain 1000 Prestige in both of those cases. If Prestige were based on the two Pokemon's actual CP values, rather than the ratio between the two, training could be a lot more fair. Training against stronger Pokemon would be worth more prestige, as it should be, and methods like the bubble strat would be rendered ineffective. If the maximum prestige you could earn was equal to half of the defending Pokemon's CP, then defeating a 3000 CP Dragonite in training could be worth up to 1500 prestige, defeating a 2000 CP Pokemon could be worth 1000 prestige, and defeating a 100 CP Magikarp would only be worth 50 prestige. This would encourage players to leave stronger Pokemon at gyms, and it just makes sense to earn more for defeating something that's more difficult. Now if Niantic really wanted to balance gym battles, they could change the way that losing prestige works so that that also scaled based on a Pokemon's CP. Since gyms currently lose prestige at a flat rate, it doesn't matter if an attacker uses their strongest or their weakest Pokemon. If both attackers and defenders were rewarded based on the difficulty of their battle, they would be on a much more even playing field and in my opinion, it would make fighting for control of gyms a lot more fun. With all that said, I'm interested to see how Niantic ends up balancing training battles, and I just hope they do it in a way that helps shorten the gap between attackers and defenders. To be honest, after saying all that, I'm feeling kind of discouraged. I only have one gym left, nope, zero, zero gyms. All three of the gyms that I controlled in LA, I no longer have those. And in the time that I've been sitting here, the four gyms that I can see from my house have changed hands. So if you want to take control of and hold gyms for as long as possible, the best thing you can do, honestly, is go out with a group. You can train gyms up a lot faster when you have multiple people there, you can leave more Pokemon there to discourage enemy players from trying to take it, and as a group you can take down enemy gyms faster so that you don't have to waste as many resources trying to take control of these gyms. I'm going to put together a solid group of friends on Team Instinct so we can go out together and I can show you how much easier it is to do this in a group. And make sure you follow me on Twitter because I might need a few volunteers. But honestly, I think the best thing you can do when it comes to controlling gyms is to just curb your expectations. You're probably never going to collect a gym defender bonus for 10 gyms at once because the game is just designed in a way that encourages turnover so frequently. I think until Niantic brings a little more balance to gym control, there's really not much point in making it a goal to capture and hold multiple gyms for long amounts of time. With some of the recent updates to the game, I'm starting to have more faith that Niantic can actually accomplish this, so study up because eventually all this will hopefully mean something. Until next time guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow. While we're out here, I'm going to try something out that's been discussed quite a bit on the internet lately. And that's using incense when you're far away from any Pokemon spawn points. If you're in an area where there's no spawns mapped, incense will draw from the entire pool of Pokemon when deciding what Pokemon will appear. I'm not sure if we're far enough from any spawn points right now to make this work, but I'm going to put an incense on and see what happens.